Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to be going over how to create a best fit alignment for a rail track. Um, a best fit alignment is important because it helps you figure out the bearing of your tangents, um, the radius of your curves, and the lengths of spiral. Uh, this is useful when you create your siding track because you typically you want to mirror the existing entities uh, of your main line. Um, so for this task, you're going to need um, survey points, either the rail survey points or a uh, survey of each individual rail, or you are going to need um, the center line um, rail survey. Um, either way uh, works fine. Um, this method will work for either types of survey data. Um, if you do have um, points of the individual rail, um, there's a couple of additional pieces of info you're going to need. Uh, first, uh, your gauge uh, distance. So for North America, that's 1.435 meters. So if you were to draw an imaginary center line like this, um, a typical survey point will be taken about there and there. So that's the top of rail at the gauge point. Um, so this distance here would typically be, you know, this one would be negative 0 0.7175. And this one would be positive 0 0.7175. But what I've noticed in my experience with getting surveys is the surveyors will actually survey the middle point of the rail, which is about, I'm going to use a different color for this one, let's do red. So the surveyor will actually survey these two points instead. Um, so in that case, you're going to get a little bit more than 7175. I've, I've typically seen about... 0 0.75 so this will become a, um, apparent when we do our best fit um, align uh, best fit lines and curves so with that being said let's create our first tangent so this video i'm just going to be doing one curve and uh, two tangents just to start off um, so let's go here and I'm not going to use this best fit alignment. It doesn't work too well for a rail or I don't know about roads. Um, so for here, we're going to just start off creating all the tangents and just basic CAD lines. And then we'll create the alignment afterwards. So we'll go here, select Kogo points. Um, so an important part about when you're selecting your points is that you want to, since we have a um, set of two points per shot, um, you're going to need to make sure you select an even number. If you select an odd number, your tangent's going to be skewed. So we want to figure out where our tangent is roughly um, and not where our spiral is. But if you select a few spiral points, that's totally fine. We can exclude them in the next step. So I'm going to select these guys here. Um, this looks like I'm going into the spiral here, but I'm just going to select them anyways, just to show the process. So this is our typical tangent here. And then now you're going to see what I was referring to earlier. So you, you want to look at this offset to entity, um, because we're going to be excluding points that with an offset that's not in the middle. So for example, a good offset to entity is when point 0.1 and point 0.2, so odd number and even number, is roughly the same. So if you're looking at 15 and 16 here, you can see that it's point 0.753 and negative point 0.752. So this means that our best fit line at this set of point is exactly in the middle. And that's what we're looking for. And you can look at the ends here. We're possibly into the spiral um we're not we have a much larger offset in this area so 
and this goes back to here, we're getting 0.75. So our servers actually surveyed the middle of the rail and not the gauge point. But for this exercise, that's totally fine. Um, so let's go ahead and exclude these points and you'll notice it recalculates and recenters the best fit. So I like to go um, until it's kind of, um, so my, um, my accuracy for using best fit is usually about a 0 0.05 meter error. So when the two points are within 0 0.05, I usually consider that close enough. So if you go here, this is much more than 0 0.05. So we'll exclude these points. And we just keep excluding the points uh, so until we get 0 0.05. So here we're good. So I'm just going to keep excluding points on this end. Um, this is actually 0 0.05. So could possibly stop here. Let's do that. Um, and there we go. We got our first tangent here. Um, now we need another tangent. Uh, we, we either do this curve or this curve. I think this curve looks um, more fancy. So let's do that one. Um, Let's go here, select some more points. So we want to select tangent, but it's okay if we get some spirals in there. Let's go like that, like that. Hit enter. Same thing. We're going to start excluding points. And always make sure that you have an even number of points. Otherwise, you've made an error in picking points. Actually, we can even uncheck these because they're getting pretty close. So I'm going to deselect these two and we're good. Maybe I will just make that a little bit better. There we go. So you can see we got a really short bit of tangent here. Um, you can see the, this spiral here and this spiral is quite close. That's okay. Um, so next, what we want to do is extend these two tangents to get our uh, PI, point of intersection. So you can either use the fillet command or lengthen. I, I'll just use fillet for now with the radius zero. So hit this, this, and there is our PI. Okay, so now we can actually create. So, um, Typically what I'll do is I'll create the tangents all throughout, figure out RPIs, and then I'll go into the um, into the alignment phase. But uh, since this is just a demonstrative video, uh, that's gonna take too long and I wanna keep this short. Uh, if I do one, you should, you should be able to do all of them afterwards. Um, so let's just do this one. So I'm gonna create a new alignment. Uh, let's call this existing mainline CL, we can uh, use a rail type for that one. I don't want labels. Hit OK. And then all you got to do is just do this. So we start at this end, go there, go here. And there we go. We got a basic alignment here. Now, if you're just doing yard tracks where there are no spirals, um, it's very simple. I'm going to show you how to do that first. So it's it's a simple curve here, and you go to free curve best fit. So you incoming tangent, outgoing tangent. Um, you can do Kogo points, and you want to select a set of points that are kind of in the middle, but you can select more if you want, uh, but really you just need like the middle few, and you can see it creates a nice curve right there, um, but uh, yeah, like that, but you can see we're quite off on the spiral areas. That's because this is a simple curve. It's not a spiral. If you don't have spirals, you can do it this way. But if you do, it's a little bit more complicated here. So this is how you do um, a best fit curve for like a yard application. Um, I'm going to delete this. 
and I'm going to create this one. Oh, uh, before we do anything, we actually have to create a best fit arc. So just same as the line, we can do an arc. And here, once again, we want to select um, points that are only in curve. Now, obviously, you can't quite tell. It's not as easy as a tangent where the curve starts and the spiral ends or curve ends and where the spiral starts. So we just select some points in the middle like that. You can select more than you need. Now, exact same exercise. So you're going to be excluding points until you get a pretty good offset to entity. Um, so this one is a little bit. OK, that's pretty good. And this is good. So these two points are, you can see that's a survey error. It's kind of way off. Uh, oh, actually, it's these two. It's kind of strange. It's in the middle of the curve. But I'm just going to leave it. I typically don't exclude points that are in the middle here. OK, we got a curve. So. This is where the curve is, um, or this is where we did that just so we can figure out what the curve radius is. So the curve radius, you want to just jot that down. So that is 290.491. And you'll see why this is important, because when we create our spiral curve spiral, it's going to ask for some values. Um, oh. Actually, before that, we also need to get a rough idea of spiral length. So this is very rough. You can always just um, adjust it later. But we'll do a distance command. So this is 135 meters. And here, it's about 140. So write that down as well. And then we will do this, because this is going to ask for all of that info. So. Hit enter there and then radius of the curve. So this is where we enter our 290.491. Uh, spiral in, so that's on this side, uh, 135. Spiral out, let's do 140. And there we go, that is our basic spiral curve spiral. But you could see there's a bit of an error. Um, lots of ways to figure this out. Um, now, I typically don't like to change the radius because we've already determined the radius to be this based on the points. So what I like to do is just update the, the spiral lengths. So if you go here, um, you can just play with the incoming and outgoing spiral lengths. So let's try um, 125. And let's go to 130. OK, it's getting close. So let's try 100. No, let's try 110. Yeah, you can see that it's coming in pretty nicely now. Um, on this end, we'll do 115. Um, still some room to play with so i wonder if this needs to be go to one oh nope other way let's go to 110 here i think that's pretty good um you can obviously play with it a bit more let's try 115. this one maybe go to 110 yeah, so you can see we matched our curve pretty good. Um, you could, you know, keep playing with it and get it closer. Um, it, there are going to be some wonky curves where you just can't make it fit and you want the curve part to fit as close as possible. The spiral, you don't care as much about it. It's just the length of spiral that you care about. Um, when you go to create your proposed track. 
So that's how you create a basic best fit um, curve and alignment. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye.